Hi! Hi. I'm Faye Mailadette. And I'm Martin Mailadette. We've been married forever, and together we are indie dev duo Imaginary Friends Games. We released Shindig, our debut title, six months ago, and though it hasn't been a smash hit financially, folk who played it have really vibed with it. A bunch of indie reviewers recommended it in their holiday gift guides or their Game of the Year lists for 2021. Streamers and reviewers talked about how Shindig is wholesome, warm, uplifting, cheered folk up when they were sad, made them laugh and cry happy tears, made them feel seen, and even reinforced that it was okay not to be okay. Our game's been compared with Wes Anderson films and Ted Lasso, and somebody said it had PBS vibes too. Sadly, despite our best efforts, it flew under the radar and we only sold like 150 copies. Yeah, yeah we, we know. know. We are no strangers to making videos, and this one was originally made for a Steam event. But because Shindig has a lot more under the surface than first impressions led on, and it's all about creating a cosy pillow fort feel for players, us devs streaming gameplay wouldn't have felt right. So instead, welcome to our Shindig Direct TED Talk video about how we designed the emotional landscape of Shindig. Back up! Who are you again? A couple of years ago, we co-founded Imaginary Friends Games. We've been together for over 20 years and in the games industry for about that long, working at places like Sony, Codemasters and Nintendo, with Martin in games design, product planning and strategy, internal design consulting and business development. And Faye in QA, technical testing, editorial, plus social media and marketing for a decade, writing Nintendo Direct broadcasts and the like. We walked away from all that to follow our dreams and to make our own short, evening-sized games together. Because after a while, you realise your bones are turning to dust and you want to make something that matters. When we left Nintendo, we had a bunch of great skills under our belts, but there were parts of making games we'd never touched before, and we were going to need all of those to make our own games. So, we divided up responsibilities, and for two years we studied, grew, and built a lot from scratch. And in September 2021, we released our debut title, Shindig. What is Shindig? It's a bundle of jokes and hope. It's an adventure game about compassion and how a little kindness can make all the difference in a world full of hurt. It's a funny, feelsy, fully voiced narrative adventure in point and click clothes. It's a game that celebrates gentleness and the low key heroism of helping. It's short. It can be played from start to finish in just a few hours. <laughs> the spurious premise is this. You answer an ad in the newspaper asking for help arranging a party to cheer up the neighbourhood. Everyone's a bit down. A party will help them feel better. You're going to help make it happen. Simple as that. So, how do we get from the deceptively simple starting point of a cartoonish advert to a thought-provoking and evocative experience we're told stays with people long after they've played the game? The answer is emotional design. With a blank slate and free reign to make anything we wanted, we knew we wanted to make something that'd make folk feel good, sincerely sidestepping edginess and irony to make something completely unique and heartfelt. But, as Tracy Thorne once said, The problem with irony is it assumes the position of being the end result, from having looked at it from both sides and having a very sophisticated take on everything. So the danger of issuing irony is you look as though you just haven't thought hard enough about it and are just being a bit simplistic. Or, in other words, by making something that isn't trying to be edgy, ironic and cool, it's likely that people might just think your game is... A baby's game for babies! But Shindig is more than first impressions led on, and a great deal of time, consideration, design, analysis and intentionality went into creating that illusion of simplicity. Let's start with our chosen themes. Our starting point for Shindig was one simple idea. A nice game about throwing a party. And around that, we built up the overall themes of what we wanted it to say. Most important of which is the idea that none of us are broken, we're all just different shapes. Some themes are threads that run through many different aspects of the game. And that's where our script, characters and songs do a lot of the heavy lifting acting with compassion, gentleness and humour. Some became emotional design pillars in and of themselves, but more on that later. Presentation. Let's broach the on the surface stuff. The book's cover. It's set on an island full of talking animals, except for one remarkably photorealistic cat 
the game is all bright colours, defined outlines and stylized cartoon aesthetics that evoke picture books, children's TV and the bold palettes of classic games. On one hand, neither of us are artists, so we did our best. On the other hand, it perfectly evokes everything we were aiming for. It's shorthand for safe, comfortable and nostalgic. Then there's our soundtrack of musical pieces that are upbeat, industrious or thoughtful and poignant, but never creepy, scary, ominous or aggressive. All this adds up to create a gentle, playful environment for players to cosy down into. On top of this, our fully voiced game is almost, but only almost, fully voiced by Faye. Harking back to the times when someone might read you a bedtime story. With voices and everything! To close out the day. We kept the control system simple, so it's not you against the interface. Just click to interact with something and drag items from your inventory to use them. Here, simple is elegant and anything more would complicate or obfuscate the story we wanted to tell. In terms of tone, we shoehorned in plenty of surreal humour to make Shindig as joyful Whoa. as we could muster. While we touch on some really serious topics in the game, humour is a great equaliser, and oftentimes, folks are more relaxed and receptive if you can make them laugh and forget their worries for a hot minute. Inclusivity. Within the scope of what we could accomplish, we did our best to build as many little welcomes as we could into the very fabric of Shindig, from the rainbow of characters populating the neighbourhood to systems and menus. The first thing our player sees when they start up the game is an options menu. Music is turned right down by default to ensure sensitivity to players observing certain religious festivals, and the closed captions overlay is on by default, calling out the feel of Shindig's soundscape for our hard of hearing players. Within the game proper, players are invited to choose their style from a range of options, because representation matters, and we wanted our game to be welcoming to all kinds of people. In-game, subtitles are always on and displayed in large text, both as an aesthetic choice and for accessibility. Our cast is a diverse set of folk we'd like to be our friends, and we hope players feel that way too. Remember, representation matters! Classic point-and-click games were always more about the people and places for us, so we designed Shindig's puzzles not to be too hard. Our goal was to emphasise the wonder of discovery and allow gentle puzzle-solving to offer more of a framework for exploration. This way, people of all ages and ability levels can enjoy our game. Even the price was designed with players in mind. Bargain us for a game with such production values, offering three to four hours of play and low enough to be accessible to lots of players. But it looks like a baby's game for babies. Well, Shindig's not designed for kids, but there's no tonal bait and switch, and there are no swears or scares that might preclude the younger audience from enjoying the game along with their fam. We were aiming for what we call the Pixar effect, where kids can enjoy on one level, adults on another, and everyone can take something wonderful from it. Shindig's just vibes all the way down. In the adult world, gentle messages of kindness aren't communicated very often. Almost like we're supposed to tacitly accept that things like compassion, hope and joy are only for kids somehow. But we believe that kindness isn't just for children. It's for everyone, and so is Shindig. Choice Architecture One of the ways you can structure your player's experience is with choice architecture. By defining the actions your players can take at any time, or the conversation options available to them, you set the tone for their experience and communicate what you consider to be important. It's a common trope for the player character to be sarcastic or kind of mean in games of the genre. Whereas in Shindig, you literally couldn't be a douche to your new animal friends if you wanted to. Instead, you progress via being compassionate and helping out your new neighbours. Another common aspect in games that control like Shindig is that you kind of bounce around the world picking up anything that isn't nailed down, stealing stuff from people's houses. Or, if they don't want you to touch their stuff, playing nasty tricks on the NPCs so that they're distracted, and then you steal their stuff. In Shindig, one of our themes is the importance of consent. If you take an item from somebody, it's because they've given it to you freely. We also have a character called Milo, who will offer you a hug. And whether you say yes or no, he's happy, whichever course of action you choose. Community. We made the world of Shindig as warm and vibrant as we could, with a rainbow of relatable characters populating a world that feels like a place where stuff's happening. Whether you're listening to the local radio leap in your beach hut, or piecing together the story of the latest Fungens and Flagons group drama, there's a sense of community to connect with and steep in. 
There are 20 locations to explore, and about that many characters too, each with their very own personalities, voices, and ways of speaking. With such idiosyncratic individuals populating Shindig's neighbourhood, all our players seem to find a fave sooner or later. So far, Steve is the unexpected breakout hit of Shindig. Go, Steve! In the main game, our cast have some small problems that you'll help to solve. And once you've helped each character out, you can get to know them better by hanging out together. Which brings us on to... Connection. Throughout the game, many members of our cast talk about their mental health just dropping it into conversation, because it doesn't have to carry stigma or be kept secret. Looking after the weather in your head is a normal part of everyday life. Building trust with your new friends of course means they might share more with you on some deeper emotional topics too. In Unlockable Hangouts, you'll find discussions of invisible illness, burnout, bullying and more. And while you'll be invited to empathise, at no point will you be asked to fix your new friends, because they're not broken. By creating a gameplay loop where you progress by being kind, we create a low-key hero in each and every player, with the very available superpower of holding space for people and showing compassion. Because we hoped that players would connect with the game, we built in the, spoilers, you go to the titular shindig, and there's even a post-game chapter where your new friends will thank you for all your hard work. Calm. We used to joke that Shindig was a talking simulator, or a mooching sim, because it's more about moseying around a cool island, chatting to folk, and being chill than anything else, and we built this into the bones of the game. Our spurious premise is designed to take the pressure off. You're not saving the world, though your actions might change someone's world for the better. And there's only one ending, the good ending, so there's no need to stress about choices. The point and click interface is easy to master, and the speed of the main character is set so that players can spot details while they're exploring, rather than zipping by and missing something. We also built in locations like the waterfall and the gardens, where you can sit down for a spell, take a load off and listen to the sound of the waves or the birds singing. And while you don't get any achievements for doing so, you could be rewarded by seeing something special you might otherwise have missed. Just like in real life. And there you have it! How two depressed developers made a joyful, wholesome, uplifting game called Shindig using emotional design. Thanks for watching. We hope you'll give Shindig a try. It's on sale right now for the price of a burger. Treat yourself. We hope you have an awesome day. Take care now. Bye! Bye. I need you to bring me a few things that spell a fine Shindig. If it's all right, I'd like to deliver the deets via the gift of some. Sing it, Piggy. Gonna have ourselves a shindig, putting down my banging tunes. Decorate it up real bright, have a little cake too. Gonna have refreshing drinks tonight, everybody is a feeling so fine. Shindig, shindig, everybody at the shindig. Did you get all that?